Okay, spring is right around the corner and I wanted to play with one of my decals. And you know, I've made a lot of ornaments and sun catchers using these, uh, but just using a Frit Blend. And there are some amazing artists out there. Tabitha was one, um, uh, Paulette Lozano is one that I can think of, who have used Murini or very specific placement of large chunks of Frit uh, to create and follow the patterns that are in here and create pieces using that. And so, I am blessed to have no shortage of Murini from talented folks like Tabitha, um, also Lori Moreno from Wilderness Glass. And so I am going to dip into both stocks. Yes, I'm using mixed stock from different artists. I'm not exclusive to anybody. This is what I got. But I'm going to dig in and find leaves and flowers and things that I think would look kind of cool in here. And uh, uh, of all of my designs, this one is G. If you happen to go to my website, fusing.shop to look, this one is G. I just felt like this one uh, could lend itself well to most of those shapes. Uh, I'll probably add some coarse frit in there as well. And so what I'm gonna do is uh, fr fairly simple. I'm just putting the, the decal underneath my clear sheet glass. I'm going to place uranium pieces. It'll be a little bit detailed work, but um, it's the holiday and I've got some time. So I'm gonna place that. I will tack it down with some hairspray, make sure it sticks real well. Uh, and then I'm gonna fire it to a full fuse and then I will apply the decal. So let's, uh, let's go through that process. All right, well, here it is. So I um, have an extensive collection of Murini and uh, Millie Fiore from Tabitha and from uh, Lori, as I mentioned, but I was uh, did not realize how much of it is not transparent. And I really wanted to go transparent on this as much as I could since this is gonna be a sun catcher in a, in a window. Um, but uh, I, this is not precise, but this is a lot of fiddly work and some of you love fiddly work. Um, this is not my normal, but it sure was fun putting it together. And um, the hairspray wasn't working because things were moving around too much. So I went to the big guy to the glass tack gel so that it would really, really uh, stick as I worked on this. So I am gonna do a full fuse on this. I'm just gonna see if I could pick this up. Just want to kind of look at it against the white. So, you know, it's not going to be a perfect match for the uh, for the pattern, but uh, that's pretty cool, don't you think? Um, some people use uh, a drill and drill a hole to hang these. I like to use my glass hangers, so I wasn't worried about, you know, kind of the design and the space and such. I'll, I'll address that later after the firing. So I'm going to put in, I've got another load going in with a full fuse, so I'm just going to toss it in with that. Uh, I'll put my schedule in the video notes, as I always do, uh, and I'll show you what this looks like when it comes out. Okay, I decided to go ahead and make some more of these. Uh, I used, because uh, why not? I've got some stuff going into the kiln anyway. Um, I've used my Atecta base, and then um, I have some twisted cane. I don't remember if this came from Lori Moreno at Wilderness Glass or if it came from Tabitha. I'm thinking Tabitha. Uh, speaking of, I used one of her uh, uh, mandalas here in the middle and then some of her leaves as well. And then I just filled it in with some coarse uh, frit. So we'll see kind of what that looks like. I'm going to do a full fuse fire of this. All of these actually face up. Um, and I think I may have some distortion and I'll have to take it to the grinder when they come out, but uh, that's okay. Uh, in this case, let's see if I can pick this up. Uh, I used all of Tabitha's uh, mandalas here um, and then filled in with Frit. I don't know if I'll like these colors or how this will turn out. I was just really just playing and looking for transparency as much as I could. You may have seen in the video, I smeared a bunch of glass tack, um, the gel uh, down. And then, um, and then I also came back and did a little bit of hairspray too to try to get all of this on there fairly solid. And then this final one, this is all uh, glass from Lori Moreno. So uh, at Wilderness Glass, uh, both the green and this orange, these orange flowers, these were clearance flowers from her or overstocks or whatever from um, 
uh, uh, Black Friday sale that she had a couple years ago, and I've just been hanging on to them, and then I filled in with some frit. What's interesting about these flowers, um, they are uh, glow-in-the-dark. So as a sun catcher, that could be kind of cool as they absorb the light all day, and then what happens to them at night? We'll see. Um, they are, they were, I can't tip this over. It, they're real tall. I probably should have chopped all these in half, so I'm going to get a lot of flow and distortion out of these, but I thought, why not? Let's just play with it and see what happens. So I left them the, the original size that they are, but they're, they're twice the size that they probably should be. So I'm going to get a lot of folding over and flow. Again, I'm going to do full fuse on that. I'm, I'm confident I'm going to have to clean up the edges uh, of this one to get it back to square. So um, anyway, there you go. I'm going to put them in at a full fuse and uh, we'll see what they look like when they come out. Okay, I'm pretty pleased. So um, this first one I fired face down with the idea that um, that I would try to keep more of the pattern and more specifics of the pattern, which I like a lot. So uh, I'm pretty pleased with that. Um, however, it looks just as nice on this side and I like the depth that the extra layer of clear gives me. So uh, as I expected, it didn't quite stay within the line. So I'm gonna clean that up a little bit. Uh, as is the case with all of these. Um, this one's really nice. I like the colors quite a bit. I'll clean up the edges just a little bit to try to round it out a little bit more before I apply my decal. Same here. This uh, did not distort as much as I expected, but just a real quick, you know, the flat lap that I have, uh, that slanted caber is what they call it. Um, just a couple of quick hits with this and, and that'll clean that up nice. And then this one, as I expected, had a little bit more distortion, but still not as much. Now, it's pretty uh, thick and textured on the surface. Uh, as a sun catcher, it's actually going to be pretty heavy. Um, so you have to make sure you have a, a hung well in the window. The back is nice and flat, so I think I'm going to use on all on these others. I'm going to use the back to apply my decal. Uh, but same thing, I'm going to go ahead and hit that just a little bit with um, on the... Uh, to square up the edges just a little bit. So I'm going to do that next and then I will apply my decals. Okay, so you saw how I got those cleaned up. Really, really simple. I love that machine. I know you know I love that machine. I know I talk about it a lot. Uh, yes, I'm an affiliate. I have a link. Um, so you can check that out if you're interested in purchasing one. I always appreciate you buying through me. Uh, it makes it so easy. Okay, so now I've got my uh, decals. And what you do here, if, if you've never seen these before, uh, super simple to use. And for those of you who have seen them and have been afraid to order them because you don't like cutting circles uh, in glass, I have, I have square designs. So I have uh, two of them that are um, square-ish. One is this one, which is an actual square. And then one is this, um, let's grab one, kind of a pillow square, if you will. Uh, but, you know, you don't have to cut circles to use these. As a matter of fact, if you want to use the more standard ones, you don't have to necessarily cut a glass circle. You could certainly put that on a square piece of glass. Okay, I digress. So um, they, some of them come with a little piece of wax paper, a um, little tissue paper that you peel off, and uh, I started to get sloppy with it. If it doesn't peel off well, looks like this one is not going to. Most of them do, but of course the one that I grab here does not. A um, little white vinegar uh, takes care of that no problem. So there's a little bit of um, uh, wax paper residue that's left on there. Again, 95% of these peel off nice, and then the one that doesn't I've got on camera here. But no fear, I've got a little bit of white vinegar. I'm going to take care of that right now. This is actually just a mix I keep in my garage all the time. It's half vinegar and half water. And uh, I'm just going to spray a little bit of that on there, kind of let that soak a little bit, work it with my finger, and then it's uh, coming right up. It doesn't hurt the decal, uh, but it does take care of that sticky white um, uh, uh, waxy paper 
from the manufacturer. They put that on there to protect the decal. And again, in most cases it comes right off. Uh, but in the few instances where it doesn't, uh, you know, honestly, just a little bit of a fingernail and some of this vinegar uh, takes it off. Uh, you do want to get all of that wax paper off because if you leave any of it on, it can affect your decal. So um, make sure that you do get all of that off. Okay, I think I've got it all off now. And so then the next step is to, well, I don't have it all off. comes off relatively easy. I realize that can be frustrating, but now I'm looking at it again. It's all off. Okay, so now I've got uh, some distilled water that I've just put in a little lid here, frankly, and that all it's going to do is sit in there for, I don't know, 30 seconds or so, not even. Kind of depends on how warm, warm your water is, but it will start to separate from the paper, and then this is called a water slide decal. You just um, want to slide it off of the paper that it's fixed on. Yeah, it's not sliding yet, so let me let that soak a little bit. So we're going to do this one first, and um, I have decided I do want to use the back. You want to use kind of the flattest surface because you don't want any bubbles in these, and so in this case this was the back of it that was touching the kiln shelf, uh, but it's perfectly flat and smooth, so it won't be any problem. Okay, so you see how that is, whoops, a little wax paper there. See how that is ready to slide off? So what I'm going to do is now just kind of line it up on my piece of glass here and hold on to it, put a little bit of pressure to hold on to it with my thumb, and then I'm just kind of pulling that piece of paper out from under it. And now it is wet, so you've got a little time here to kind of work and get it arranged where you want it. I don't know if you can see this well. I often forget that I'm doing this for an audience and uh, kind of forget where my camera is. So then you're just gonna basically kind of burnish it down around the edges um, the best that you can, making sure that there aren't any air bubbles, but this is a really flat surface and I did a pretty good job sliding that on there, if I do say so myself. So I don't have any air bubbles that I can see. And so I'm just uh, kind of burnishing it around the edges and then uh, I'm gonna set it aside and let it dry. So the yellow that you see here is really just the kind of flux membrane that's the carrier for this black decal design and it fi fires totally clear. So the yellow that you see as part of the decal will, will fire off and be totally clear. So that will be the look of my piece when it's done. So I'm gonna set that aside to dry and I'm going to go ahead and do my next one. case all the wax paper came off which is what's supposed to happen so now that is just going to soak for a minute you want to make sure that everything is nice and clean which this is I just cleaned it um, with glass cleaner again I'm going to apply to the back of this because it's got a nice flat surface but also I mean this is a little bumpy and I don't think this would be a deal breaker you could certainly do that I put this in for a full fuse in my kiln but only a kind of a lighter full fuse I only did 1460 I often do 1475 but I had another piece in there that I wanted to kind of go a little bit lighter on. So it's got a little bit more surface um, texture than maybe it would normally if I went up to my full 1475. But I also want to fire on the back because I like the depth that that extra little kind of three millimeters of tech to give it. And uh, gosh, this looks like water, really, as I'm looking at it. Okay, I'm sure I have talked long enough for this to be sliding, ready to slide off. Yep. So I just line it up, slide it off. Got a little bit of that wax paper that I left in there. All right, so there's just a few wrinkles. So you might wet your finger a little bit. Um, this is all I use is my finger. I suppose you could use a tool, um, you know, a little rubber tool or something, but uh, I just use my finger and kind of line it up, make sure all the bubbles are out make sure the wrinkles lie flat, um, definitely where it's black. So if, if it is not touching the glass in the black parts, if there's a bubble there uh, or a significant um, wrinkle, you're going to see it when it comes out fired. I'm not so concerned about the clear portion, uh, which looks yellow, but um, definitely on the black. You want that black area to be nice and um, flat and touching your glass. 
And I like to let these dry for half an hour, 40 minutes or so before I put them into the kiln for their firing. All right, so on this one, I had chose this pattern. The wax paper's already off of that. So let me put it in, let it start soaking. I think this one's gonna be neat. Before I put it in, it reminded me of birthday candles and it still reminds me of birthday candles as it is. But once you put the design on it, I think it's gonna completely change the effect of it. But I'm really pleased with what that looks like. All right. Is that sliding yet? Not quite. Be patient. Thank you. While I'm doing this, thank you to everybody who has purchased these decals. You have, um, you've made me so happy because it's just so much fun to see um, all the work that you guys are coming up with, all the beautiful things that you're inspiring me with on your designs. It's just, it's so much fun. It gives me such, um, such satisfaction. Okay, so I'm positive this is going to be ready now. Yep. So sliding that off, putting that to the side. And then what I've, I've got time, see, to kind of line this up because I, when I slid it on, I wasn't paying attention and I totally had it to where it wasn't really matching my pattern. So I'm just working it a little bit, trying to get it centered. Oh, you know what? I put this on upside down. I meant to put it on the other side. Um, do I mess with it? Yeah, because I really think I want it on the back side. Do you think I can do this? Let's see. I'm going to get it wet again. Whew. Playing with fire here, but making it work. All right, so yeah, because I like the depth that you get with that that way. All right, so now I'm just going to wet my finger again, make sure... Now, one of the things that I've seen, I've had some people who have sent me photos and said, hey, this decal didn't fire right, what happened? And what happened is they put it on upside down. So in an example like that, where I just had to flip the glass, you have to make sure you've kept, uh, you remember which side was up. Because if you fire this decal, if you somehow take it all fully off your glass and flip it and put it upside down, it's not gonna fire right. And uh, almost consistently, I, people don't have too many problems with these decals, but when they've had an issue and they send me a photo, I said, are you sure you fired it the correct way? And then in most cases they're like, oh yeah, you're right. I think I accidentally flipped it. So, um, you know, in a case like that, like I just did there, you just gotta make sure you remember which side was up. So I think, I think I've got that on there fairly well. And I'm shifting it a little bit to try to see if I can see any bubbles. I don't see bubbles. So pretty happy with that placement. And then the final one, the one oh, I should have had this soaking while I was doing that. Uh, I like to kind of have one ready, uh, but I forgot. So um, this one I think might be a little bit harder to line up, but still pretty cool. And um, in this case, I am not gonna put it on the back because I want the depth. So I'm gonna put it on the, the front. I don't feel like this design is fully centered um in the end so i think it spread a little bit and didn't quite center so that might be a little bit tricky to kind of work out but you know it's an approximation and it's art and we'll see what it looks like once i slide it we can work it a little bit you see how easy these are i was honestly pretty intimidated by the idea of doing decals when i set out to design these but uh, in the end i found that they're a lot easier to use than I thought they would be. All right, so there we go. Trying to line up my pattern, get it where I wanted it. Start to work out the bubbles. So these over this overlaps now uh, on the edge, and that's perfectly fine. So there are people who, um, you know, maybe make their glass a little too big and um, grind it down, or they've made it too small, or um, or, you know, it's hard to match up. These designs are three and a half inches, but it's hard to kind of guess in a kiln schedule uh, with volume and six millimeter rule exactly how the glass is going to turn out. But you can kind of burnish it around the sides just as, I, as I'm doing here, and that's perfectly fine. Uh, I still think I'm going to have a really neat... So you can see the line is on the edge here, but it's now folded over the side here. So what? It's so minimal. Uh, I really don't think that that's a big deal. 
I'm just trying to make sure I've got my pattern lined up as closely as I can. I'm pretty, pretty pleased with that. I don't see any bubbles. So I'm going to put it down. Now you can um, dab any carefully dab off some excess water if you've got it and then let it dry for about a half an hour or 30 minutes. That is, a, that is 30 minutes, half an hour, 45 minutes. Uh, put it in the kiln. I put it in, um, my firing is about uh, anywhere between 1200 to 1250 for about 30 minutes to fire these on. Anything above 1250 and you're going to start to burn that black out. So um, I don't like to go much higher than that. Honestly, I think 1225 for 30 minutes is a really nice um, place for me in my kiln. And so uh, I'll show you what these look like when they come out. Okay, I've pulled these out of the kiln and I'm so excited to show them to you. But before I do, I cannot forget to mention, if you're interested in my decals, you can find them at www.fusing.shop, www.fusing.shop. And I do ship worldwide, but it's kind of a pain in uh, Europe and, and overseas. And so if you are interested and you're a friend of Tabitha Burrill, she is now selling them on her website, uh, Tabitha's Gl uh, Glass Emporium, and uh, and you can find them there. So she'll, she's selling the pack of 10, one of each design. I've got 10 different designs. So you saw the, uh, the two squares that I mentioned. There are eight circles. You can see them all on my website, or you can find them on Tabitha's website. She's shipping them. I know that you love her, and you're already ordering stuff. So just throw uh, a batch of them into your cart and uh, and order them from Tabitha and you might get them uh, more quickly and perhaps a little bit more affordably than trying to order them from the U.S. So I don't want to forget to mention you can find them at tabithasglassemporium.com. So next I wanted to go ahead and um, do a reveal and I pulled out my light here because I want you to be able to see the light coming through these. I am so excited. So let's start with this one, check it out. So this is the one with the glow in the dark flowers. Now I fired these at 1225 degrees for 30 minutes. And so what happens is you get a nice, um, you know, kind of a little bit of a fire polish on the edges that I ground, but uh, you get a nice solid black uh, color on your decal and it's shiny and glossy black. Uh, so I'm very, very pleased. I think the colors are super cool. Uh, so that's that one. Here's the other square one. Let's go ahead and show that off. Check it out. Look at that gorgeous, gorgeous color that you get um, from, from this. So I'm very pleased. Now, um, I can tell a little bit. I'm not sure if it comes through on camera. The, the black is not as strong as it could be. So I fired at 1225. If you fire at 1200, you're going to get a little bit more solid black. It starts to burn out anything above 1200 in my experience. Um, but uh, when I, I'm holding it up against the light, you can tell that when I hold it away, which you can't see now. But um, or actually, if I just turn off the light gives you a sense. See, it looks like a very nice solid black. It's just with that uh, super strong LED light coming through, kind of throws off the, the look a little bit. So I'm going to turn that back on though, because I want you to see these bright, beautiful colors that come through. All right, next, I'm going to save the best for last. This is the one that had the mandala in the middle and the twisted cane. Check that out. Those spring green colors are awesome, combined with the yellow, combined with that pop of uh, kind of orangey red that you see in the middle with the mandala. I think that is super cool. I'm very pleased. And then this one, I don't even think I'm going to sell this. I think I might just keep this for myself. Check it out. Look how gorgeous that is. In fact, I want to move these so that you can really see the light coming through. Check out the gorgeous color in those leaves that are right in the middle there. I mean, just absolutely absolutely stunning. I think um, I'm, I'm quite proud of my decals, actually, uh, so uh, I'm very happy with those. But the artistry of the glass from Tabitha, Lori Moreno, I even used a little bit of uh, Nancy Sala's uh, pieces, which she's not selling anymore, but uh, I just, you know, went into my stash and used what I, what, what I could. And I think that, you know, Tabitha and Lori and a little bit of Nancy kind of breathed, you know, beautiful, gorgeous life into these. So now we're going to put hangers on. So again, some of you might drill holes and you're absolutely welcome to do that. You can drill your hole before you fire it. It's not going to hurt the decal. Um, you could do it after. I'm not a huge fan of drilling holes. What I am a fan of are my glass bales. So you also know uh, most likely that I sell these glass uh, bales. I think that they are awesome on something like these sun catchers. And so that's the path that I'm choosing to take. Now I have, 
you know, I work through a lot of prototypes with, um, with my uh, artists that I'm working with on these. And so these are pretty large. This one's maybe a little closer to what they usually are, but these others were some of the earliest, whoops, earliest prototypes, and they're really large. So um, if you buy bales from me, yours aren't going to be quite this large. These are kind of the monster ones, but I still kept them for my own stock, and I think they'll work quite well on a sun catcher like this, particularly some of these larger square ones. Um, they are, in reality, they're a little bit closer to uh, this size here. So this is kind of out of the the current batch. So you can see where we had these large monster ones on the right. Um, I just thought that those were too big if you were going to use them for jewelry. And so I really worked with them to fine tune these and get these much smaller. Now these are not fusible. So if you go to the website, you'll read about that as well. They are not fusible. They're made of borosilicate glass so that they're super strong and crystal clear and gorgeous but they're not fusible. I think that the uh, borosilicate glass is stronger and is gonna hold up better, um, but you do have to glue them. So uh, that's what I'm gonna do next. But if you are interested in ordering them, they're gonna be a little bit more like this size, which I think actually work quite well on here, but because I've got these monster ones that I wanna go ahead and use up, I'm gonna use them instead. So hopefully that helps. And then my adhesive of choice, I've been loving this Gorilla Maximum Strength Construction Adhesive in Clear. So I have this, uh, it's in my Amazon store if you want to go uh, follow the link. Uh, a, one tube has lasted me quite a long time. I'm using this basically for almost anything. It's a nice kind of silicone, uh, flexible, low odor, waterproof, paintable. Um, I haven't had a yellow on me at all, um, and it cures after about 24 hours, so I'm real, real pleased with it. So I'm going to clean up this glass, and I'll come back and glue these on and show you how I do that. Okay, so I've cleaned up my glass and I'm ready to glue, and uh, it's really pretty, pretty simple. So I'm opening up my adhesive. I'm just kind of getting a little bit of a bubble of it up to the top, and then um, I, you know, decide on which direction I want to hang this. And um, the bales look almost identical, but you can kind of tell that there's a, a a right side and a wrong side sometimes when gluing these. And so I'm just going to try to find the right side. And then all I do is just squeeze a little bit of that adhesive onto there, just a little bead of that stuff on there. And then I'm going to apply it to the back. Now, some people, uh, when you're using things like E6000, like to rough up the glass a little bit. Um, you could certainly do that. I, I just haven't found that to be fully necessary. Um, my bales have this leaf texture pattern, so that gives some grip to the bale itself. Um, and in the case of this glass, I had this... Uh, down on the kiln shelf, and so there's some rough spots anyway where it was kind of touching the kiln shelf, so I'm not going to bother uh, marking up that glass. But you can see how that held on there, and um, I'm just going to set it and let it um, fully dry. So I'm going to do that on, oops, got to figure out which is the, the right side to use here. Gosh, in this case it really is almost the same. I think I'm going to do this side. So just a little dab of glue, place it on there, probably using a little too much, but I don't mind when it smushes up around a little bit. So the glue is clear, the bale is clear, and so you can see it on the backside, but not as much as you would see, you know, kind of a heinous <laughs> metal bale. Uh, and I like this better than embedding uh, wire into the glass, but those are all great ways to do these, and drilling a hole is a great way to do it. It's just personal preference, and, and my personal preference is to use uh, my bales. I just like the nice finished glass look that I get with those. So now on this round one, I think I'm going to put the bale behind one of the leaves, maybe. I don't know. Got to see. Yeah, kind of like it like that. So... A little bit of glue. Plop that on there. I just kind of position it where I want, squeeze it on, try to get as much surface area covered as I can, and put it down. It's not going anywhere. This um, glue is kind of globby enough, but I'll, I'll double check it before I go back into the house uh, to let it dry for the night and just make sure that everything looks good. Um, yeah, I like that placement, just like that. So I'll double check it, but uh, I'll give it 24 hours and then I'll pick them up and play with them. And uh, I'm sure that it'll be nice and 
tight on there. But look at that, it's just a nice finished look. I just think that that's a really classy way to, to finish these. You've got that glass bail, and then you can put a hook through it or even a fishing line or something to hang it in the window. Uh, but this is a nice, um, nice clean, clean look to that. So there you go. That's how I use my bales and glue those on. Uh, I'll check back here in 24 hours and we'll see how they stick.